Hey Owen, John Wilford here. I wanted to take some time and give a quick response to this video. I'll put a, a thumbnail on here somewhere. Um, where you, you kind of go through and talk about how there is no agreement that you have with the left. And you kind of give some vague differentiation between, I think you refer to it as the new left versus the old left. And... I don't know, I guess I'll be honest, I think it's a, a quite convenient uh, distinction to say that, you know, you have no agreement with the people your age who identify with this move, with the movement of the left, uh, but you absolutely have agreement with the elders that you had to grow up under. Um, seems convenient, yeah, you know, lets you get off the hook for Christmas dinner and all that, but, you know, maybe there's more to it. I, I, I don't want to kind of box you into that. Uh, it just, it, I guess I'll, I'll leave it there. It seems convenient. Um, and, and you mention a few reasons, a very narrow scope of, of politics, why you could never have uh, agreement with them. And, and you, you akin it to child abuse, which, you know, has been a, uh, a popular tactic going back for a while. Actually, I'm going to stop with that. I'm going to go back. Because you uh, do the courtesy of telling your political background before you start. And I'll tell you mine. Uh, I am libertarian. Uh, the terms never changed for me. I've been libertarian since I was old enough to vote. Um, I've worked within the party within Texas for a long time. I've been a member of the state executive committee. I was the state treasurer for a while. Right now I'm serving as a state chair. But... All of that aside, you know, we can name a credential drop all we want. Um, the point is, I am Libertarian. I vote in the Libertarian Party. I support Libertarian candidates and Libertarian principles. There's no blurry conservative line to me. Um, in fact, if, if I'm going to go with a term, I, I often use the term classical liberal. But again, uh, when, when you talk about these things... The terms uh, conservative and liberal throughout our history have changed so much that you have to like specify the time period. So, you know, using a 1700s term doesn't really connect with people. So, libertarian, not conservative. Straight libertarian. Um, but you, t you talked about uh, transgenderism and you talked about, you know, hormone therapy and, and, and liking it to child abuse. And, and then kind of jumped into that you have no shared goal uh, with that movement, as if to imply uh, that the movement's goal was child abuse. Like, the movement is trying to abuse children, um, and because of that, you, you, you can't share a goal with them. And I, th I think it's a rather absurd way to look at things. Um, you know, to, to look at another movement that's, that's becoming pro popular in, in the left and, and even in some uh, libertarian circles is this idea of, of peaceful parenting. This idea that, that spanking your children is a form of child abuse. Now, this is an idea I disagree with, and I guess I'll qualify with, I disagree with giving young children not medically necessary operations of any kind, um, yeah, I guess that's a full sentence. Not medically necessary operations of any kind. I think the body has an incredible ability to, to fix itself, and you need to give the body the chance to, because that's going to be the, the, the best outcome for everybody, um, health-wise, cost-wise, time-wise, trauma-wise. Uh, so I like to give the body that chance. Uh, obviously, you know that said, that your body will not fix transgenderism. Uh, not necessarily saying it needs to be fixed. Something it does, something it doesn't. Um, but that's not something your body's going to adjust to. So I'm, I'm kind of against unnecessary medical procedures. Um, and I, I'm against this idea of peaceful parenting. Not because I don't love the idea. I love the idea that, that we, could, we could have children, not have to, to spank them, to correct them. I don't take any pride in, in, in spankings. Um, 
But I, I just, I, I don't see the evidence there that it works. Now, some people are pointing to studies. Uh, most of these studies uh, aren't actually um, pointing to successful instances of peaceful parenting, but rather pointing to the failures of spanking. And that's fine. Um, but pointing to a failure of one system does not amount to the automatic su success of its polar opposite. Um, so, you know, we, we, we you know, there, there's a bit of a leap there, um, but I'm, I'm open to, to uh, peer-reviewed studies and, and what they point to. Now, why did I bring peaceful parenting into a conversation on transgenderism? The reason is that there are two groups here on, on opposite sides. One who believe that it is an abusive thing to give a a spanking, which 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 is a a um, a painful kind of motivator. Like you know, you do something wrong, you get a negative uh, uh, feedback from that, and then that pain is used to help guide your actions. That that even causing pain to a child, maybe not even in like an injuring kind of manner. But the kind of discomfort that comes from that uh, is is a form of abuse. It's a form of manipulation and abuse. And I, I understand why somebody could think that. The other side of it is um, the belief that not doing that does not adequately equip a child for the world. It doesn't it doesn't teach them the things they need to be an adult. And that handicapping a child in that manner, not giving them the tools needed to be, you know, uh, the best adult they can be, is in itself a form of abuse. So now we have these the, this kind of struggle between um, these two groups who both think what they're doing is the right thing and both think the opposite is child abuse. They share a very clear goal and think the other side is, is doing the wrong thing. I think we have a similar situation with young children uh, being put through um, operations, hormone therapies, medical procedures of any kind to realign their gender um, because of transgenderism. And I, I, again, I'll reiterate, I agree with your viewpoint on the matter. But I think there's a group of people who believe it is a form of psychological abuse to raise somebody in a body that they don't feel comfortable in. It would almost be the inverse of what you're saying. If you as a child um, were changed, altered, let's say as a baby, before you knew, you know, what, what was going on, were altered to be a female, were given a hormone therapy to be a female, and then were raised that way, and your brain's telling you this whole time that something's wrong here, that they would believe that to be a form of psychological abuse to you. And they believe that that's what's happening to these children. Their body is incorrectly due to something in their genes giving them a hormone therapy that their their biological memory, I guess you'd say, is telling them is wrong. They think something wrong is happening with their body. And this is correcting where nature has created a conflict. Um, and they believe it's an equal form of child abuse to raise these children in that situation. I think there's a very clear goal here, a very clear shared goal. Um, and what I would like to see happen is I would like to see that there, there be more data and research on what's going on. Uh, I would err to the side of, of not doing the procedure, but I am not arrogant enough to believe that I care about someone else's children more than they do. I mean, that... that that's a whole new kind of level of, of, of crazy. Now, will there be extreme outliers? I mean, you know, are there, there families where in the extreme they come through and, and just completely don't care about their kids? Yeah. 
these situations happen. I think CPS has a place for that. Uh, but for the vast majority, when you're talking about broad political movements uh, composed of large numbers of people, uh, I can't think of a more arrogant statement than to say that these broad swaths of people just don't care about their children. But you, you Owen, you just care about their children so much more than they do that you're willing to take up arms and fight the good fight. But I understand why you believe this. I understand why you think that that would be the world you live in because we live in a world that so glorifies the idea of the binary good and evil. The classical western story of this this duopoly in the world where where there's this the, these two fighting kingdoms and they're sending we, we even we even talk about this in our religions in a spiritual realm they're they're sending ideas into people's heads you have two angels uh, or two little people an angel and a demon on your shoulders uh, and they're 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 in this cosmic battle and it's really easy to see how somebody you disagree with can uh, find themselves in that demon ground now sometimes you find a conflict here as you pointed out with your grandfather uh, and this sorry your your your, your father um, being being on the classical left you you found a conflict you found somebody who vehemently disagrees with you on these issues but you also can't bring yourself to say that he is the evil he is from the evil camp and so you 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 mark him confused like yeah you're from the good camp but you but you've kind of strayed into this 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 confused area you're you're unenlightened and and we're much more easily able to forgive the unenlightened than we are to forgive the evil and you know there's an interesting evolutionary component to this because when I mark you evil it strengthens my resolve to fight against everything you stand for to completely destroy you it, it it's it's the the way you know dictators justify the 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 killing of the family of the previous administration well that administration was evil so i need to completely wipe it off i'm wiping evil off the map it is it is it was the justification for the the actions of che guevara it was the justifications for the actions of so many who did horrible things was that the other group was evil it was the it was the justification for the actions of hitler Hitler talked about the evils of the Jews as he marched through and, and, and committed mass destruction. It was evil that he was fighting. So for you to take up arms and, and find the other side, the side you disagree with, to be evil, um, it, it's not a new idea. And the scary part about where we are is we're at a place and time in our own history where we have glamorized this this bipartisanship we've glamorized not working with the other side in fact we've 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 considered it a a traitorous act to your 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 own friends your own base your own party to even reach across and work with anybody else and i've found myself with the party i'm in in a interesting place, a place that most people don't get to see, that I think has been beneficial to my growth in understanding the world, in understanding people, in reaching across and getting to know the people I disagree with the most. And that is this. Being libertarian, it is no secret that we don't have a lot of people in office. and. Most of the offices we occupy are at a very local level, and most, if not all, of those are not run in such a fashion that their party is next to the ballot. So they're not necessarily elected as a libertarian. They're elected as Joe, you know, the, the local community guy. And then we, we put him up and we tout him because, hey, he's a libertarian, and he is. And he probably runs and operates in a very libertarian fashion. Take nothing away from that, but he wasn't elected along a party line. So 
people weren't looking at him as a libertarian. They were looking at him as Joe. Now, even though everything Joe stood for might have been libertarian, and they loved everything he stood for, both those things are true, they, the, the brain didn't connect those two. So with that said, we have been able to spread a lot of ideas. When I mean, we were talking about marijuana legalization, you know, from, from day one, you know, 1971, you know, and that may be an easier year with, with the hippie movement, but there's been this mass drug war moving through the 90s, that, and we were still talking about it. We were talking about marriage equality, day one. We've been talking about fiat currency, day one. Um, we, we, the movement started uh, with a bunch of, with some Republicans working with some anarchists and uh, walking into a Republican meeting, burning their draft card and walking out starting a new party. We've been speaking against the draft, day one. We get to speak about things that the other parties don't get to. And we get to spread ideas that way. And we've seen fruit and benefit from that. But the benefit we see is through other parties co-opting those ideas and integrating into society. And does that mean there's, there's lost hope and we'll never get into office? Absolutely not. We can look through history and see other parties rising up and, and taking offices. All the way down to the very Republican Party that... that um, uh, most conservatives end up voting along. I mean, it was a third party. Uh, were there unique circumstances there? Absolutely. But every historical rise has been under unique circumstances. What will ours be? Will ours come along? I don't know. Uh, but the viewpoint I've gotten from all that is I have been forced into a position of working with people I disagree with. It, it is the only method by which I can get things done outside of the education realm, outside of the spreading ideas realm. If I want to talk about actually changing a law, that is my, my path. That is the way I, I go about it. I go find friendlies in both parties and I work with them to find things they can agree on and try and get stuff pushed through. And we have had some success. With that, it doesn't make the newspapers, and if it does, it's this Republican and this Democrat got together and worked on a bill. Uh, what you never hear is that in the background there were libertarians down at their office talking to them, trying to push it through. What you never hear is that uh, there was this issue that was teetering on the edge of, of going one way or the other, and we went through and put a letter on someone's desk saying the libertarian group is going to support or not support this, and it nudged it over. You, you don't hear those stories, right? Because that's all going on behind the scenes. You hear that representative Republican or representative Democrat signed a, uh, 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 authored a bill, and the governor signed it. That's what you hear about. So I've been forced to work with people, and I have yet, in all of that time of working with people, to meet a person who I didn't share goals with. And I think the only way you're able to find people you don't share goals with is being uninterested in finding goals you share with. Being uninterested in sharing goals. And that, unfortunately, has become a very uh, unspoken reality of our politics today. Um, if Trump was to work with Hillary Clinton, it'd be all over the news that he betrayed his base. It was all over the news when he didn't lock her in jail. Uh, and now his base forgave him. They always do. He's got an R next to his name and he's in office. You forgive him. You move on. Then you hate him during the election cycle um, when, when, when they're running into primary. Um, I, I don't know how that's going to go with Trump. Uh, and then you love him again when they're in office because they're your guy. They may be a bastard, but they're your bastard. Um, but if they ever work with, with the other side, oh my God. Um, and, and, and it's funny because both parties talk about wanting to work with the other party. That's the di dialogue you hear. That's the, that's the good thing. I want to work with the other party, but as soon as one of them actually does it, as soon as one of them steps to the other side on any given issue, as soon as one of them says, my own people have become... Uh, uh, unreasonable on this issue. I'm going over here, or even I'm not. I'm not even going to the other side. I'm coming here. 
It is all over the news that they did it, and it's a negative thing, and they're betraying their party, they're betraying the people who elected them, as if they were all pulled, as if every single person that elected them wanted to vote strictly down party lines, which is which is the narrative you get from these 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 strong political division of parties. It's become new McCarthyism. It is a popular idea in politics right now to not find common ground. And I think if you would take the time to break away from that very rigid system where you're encouraged to not find grounds, you could find them. I think it's a matter of want to at this point. And maybe you don't want to. And, you know, in debate, you, you can argue um, when you're trying to persuade somebody. You can argue that they could get something they want by going through something you want. But there's no way to change somebody's want. And I hope that you see not agreeing with them as an ends to a means. Which means maybe someday you could be convinced that agreeing with them is a better path. And not a end in itself. Because if you do see it as an end in itself, there, there's there's no hope to change your mind. I'm, me and, and anyone else who talks to you about it is wasting their breath. Uh, but I, 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 I doubt that's the case because you said you have found a way to find common ground with your the people you respect in your life who disagree with you. And I hope that this can help you see that there is a better way from an ethics standpoint, from a, um, uh, a getting stuff actually done, and from a getting them to see your side more, and hopefully help the very children that you say you're wanting to help. Uh, there's a better way, and that is finding common ground. And Owen, you're smart, I've seen your comedy, you're witty, you're funny. That's the only reason I subscribed, I didn't even expect to get political stuff. Um, and even like uh, some, some slight skirts of philosophical stuff, which I was thrilled being a, a politically active person, uh, state chair of political party, and having a podcast called Six Pack Philosophy where I drink beer and, and talk philosophy with, with two of my good friends, uh, one being my wife. Uh, so I was thrilled to get a little bit of politics out of this, but I will say I've been a, a little disappointed in uh, the rigidness of the message and the um, uh, predictable division, I guess I'd say, um, uh, within your message. So hopefully something changes. Hopefully you got something out of this video. If not, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll keep moving along, keep trying, keep talking. Maybe to you, maybe to others. Uh, so, see you later.